Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Ivy Lane Interiors, and today's project is this Barrister bookcase. This came to me in really pretty good condition overall for its age. When I did the research on it, it's probably pushing 100 years old. And so all of the glass is intact. Beautiful. I've got the original labels. Um, I have one drawer, one door there you can see that's off, so I had to reattach that. But the main thing I have is like alligator finish. You can see on the top here. So it's like a shellac finish probably, and it just needs to be revived. So my goal with this piece was to mainly just work on the top. And so I started with the top because it had the most damage on it. And I'm just going to try to take off that lacquer finish. So I'm using lacquer thinner. I'm just going in with a scratch bright pad and I'm just going to try to work it into the finish. I'm just trying to pull off that finish. I'm not trying to go too deep. I'm just trying to get rid of all of that alligatoring um, because that just is a failing finish. Once I have all that removed and I've done a light sanding, then I'm just going to come back and I'm going to put a fresh coat of shellac on it. This is probably the original finish that they used on it. Shellac is um, many, many years old. So it's a really, um, you can put multiple layers on and it's a really durable finish because they've been using it forever. You can see I'm just applying it with a foam brush. You'll also see later, you can also spray it on, which I do as well. So whatever you have handy, it's easy to use. And you can just see it just revives that finish beautifully. You know, we've kind of gotten away from shellac and lacquer finishes, but honestly, they're pretty easy to revive because you can just take off that, that top layer and then just reapply it. So I'm going to take my spray shellac and I'm just really going to go over the top and the sides. Um, I even went on the sides of the actual bookcase itself. And so I'm just really, you'd be, you'd be amazed at how much that shellac just really makes that wood pop again. I listed for sale, but it kind of sat in my dining room for a little bit. And the more I looked at it, the more I thought I could work on those brass accents on the sides. I removed them and I soaked them and my normal boiled water and vinegar, didn't even think to test them. Come to find out they're not real brass. They are brass plated. So I removed the brass. I uh, <laughs> wanted to cry. So what I decided to do is I went to the depths of YouTube to see how to re-brass plate at home. So what I came across was these brass brushes that you can attach to a drill. You're going to, now the one I saw showed you taking a torch to it. And I thought, well, how hot can a torch get? And it's about the same heat as a heat gun. So I thought, I think, a, I think a heat gun would be a little safer for me to use. So I'm going to use a heat gun and I'm going to heat up the metal and then I'm going to use the drill with the attached brass brush and it was going to kind of produce a chemical reaction and it's going to transfer some of that brass onto this little bracket. I was a little skeptical, but as you can see, as I keep going, it's not perfect, but it really did re-brass plate these top two pieces. So once I did those though, the rest of the brackets look terrible because they were tarnished. And that's why I did in the first place because they had like little patches of tarnish. And so, I don't know, I have a tendency when I see something, I start picking at it. So now I have two on the tops because these, these are the straps that go down the sides. So the two top ones look good because they're re-brass plated. And the bottom four straps on each side were still tarnished. Now I knew they weren't real brass at this point. So I was very hesitant. What am I going to do with these? So what I decided to do is I taped them off and I decided to use Brasso with Q-tips and a very delicate scotch Bright pad. And I just got off as much of the tarnish as I could because I didn't want to take them off. This is a hundred year old piece. And so I really wanted to be careful with it. I, I'm not, I wasn't supposed to be doing a full restoration, but in the end, I kind of did a lot because I ended up doing the base as well, which I'll get to in a minute. But 
it actually worked. And so it's not perfect. But again, this is a hundred year old piece. I removed as much tarnish as I could and it looks really nice. Since I already worked on the side accents, I thought I might as well go ahead and take off the little knobs. And I'm going to test those and see if they're brass or not. And then I'm going to try to polish those up too. So what you do is you take the piece of metal and you attach it to a magnet. And if it's not magnetic, then it is brass. And so this is not catching the magnet on my phone case so I can tell that it's brass. So I'm safe to use Brasso and I'm just going to go ahead and polish these up. Sometimes it's the small accents that make a big difference. And as you can see, as I replace these little knobs, that it makes a big difference. So since I went ahead and did the top and I did the brass and I did the knobs, I decided I might as well do the base too. So the base had a drawer that pulls out. So I'm going to do the same process and I'm going to use lacquer thinner. Um, this one had a little bit more damage on it. So after I use the lacquer thinner, I'm going to go through and I'm going to get a bit of really good sand and try to get out some of those scuffs and gouges. And then I'm just going to reach the lack it like I did the top.
So look at the way this is put together. It's so clever. Everything is basically modular, so it just fits together perfectly. You can rearrange the boxes however you want them because they are different widths, but you have the base, and then in this particular one I have four stack, and then I have the top. So all of the original glass, um, you could use it. I've seen people use them for liquor cabinets. I've seen people use them for collectibles, books, whatever you want to use them for. But man, I really enjoyed staging it. Once I had it in my dining room, I was like, wow, this looks really good here. So maybe I should just keep this. But I did decide to let it go. This ended up going to a co-worker of my husband's. His wife wanted it to display some collections that she had. So... It went to a good home, so I'm really excited for her. But such a unique piece. Do you have one of these? Do you like this style? What are your thoughts on it? I ended up listing it for $800. Um, I've heard that they usually go for about $200 per box. So I think that was a fair price. And I, like I said, I know it went to somebody who's really going to enjoy it. So tell me what you think. And thanks for watching.